Welcome to another video of Growing With God. So far, we've been talking about who we are and who we are not. But today, I really wanna talk about something that is so important to me. I wanna talk about God's love. I will also get into God's mercy and God's grace, but I really wanna focus on God's love because this is something that I told God I wish everyone could experience. I wish they knew this. If you knew God's love, you would not deny him. You would not run away from him. And so I really wanna just focus on God's love today. And I hope that this really inspires you and encourages you and stay tuned because afterwards I wanna pray and I want you to just understand God's love. So keep watching and let's grow with God together. First things we learn when we start going to church and receiving Jesus. If you grew up in church, one of the first scriptures you learn is John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We make that scripture only about forgiveness of our sins and a lot of churches, we go through that whole process, get baptized, forgive your sins, you're made new, and then see you on your way, start serving God. But I wanna just take it a little bit deeper so that people can have just a bit of understanding of God's love for us. Something that I always say is, I've always felt this deep love for God in my heart since I was a kid. And it's nothing that church gave me, it's nothing that I picked up in this world. I believe it's something that God himself gave me. That small seed that God gave me, that small thing God put in me, so that no matter what I did, where I went, I will always know God's love. I will always have a connection to him. Like everyone in the world, we start off as sinners. We are living in a sinful life. We are just doing what we wanna do when we wanna do it. And when we come to Jesus, when we come before God and we give our lives to him, it's it's like a new day, we're made fresh. We are giving up what we knew in order to really and truly find what God has for us. And so when I did this, I actually, I grew up in church, I loved God, I always had this deep love for God, I wanted to give my life to God and serve God, but I was just too worldly for it at the time. But when God called me, that's when God started breaking me and that's when I really started to experience God's true love. I just remember getting on my knees one day and telling God, nobody loves me. No one here loves me. Nobody loves me. I have no one. And I remember just crying out to God. Just, I finally was broken. I finally was able to admit to him that I was broken. And I remember crying out to him and I remember this, this, this presence just surrounding me. And this presence was, it was just, it was so thick, like a blanket just wrapped around me. And I remember just knowing in that moment that God was saying, I love you. And I remember just feeling like everything that I had, that I held on to, everything, all the pain the world gave me, all the pain people gave me, all of the frustration, all of the lack, everything. I just remember feeling like I was laying it at the feet of Jesus. Like I was finally surrendering everything I was holding on to. And I just remember feeling like a weight was being lifted off of me. And I understood that God loved me the entire time. Even though I was carrying so much, I was able to lay it down and give it to him. And his love just surrounded me in such a supernatural way to where I felt secure in his arms. I felt safe. I knew that's where I belonged. I want you to know nobody in this world can love you like God loves you. God's love is unconditional. God's love consumes us. God's love is, it's warming. God's love, when you step into his presence, when you feel his love, it's healing to your broken heart. God's love is so beyond our own understanding. Why would you send your only son to come and die for us? He did not just forgive us of our sins. He took the enemy's weapon away. Sinful nature was the enemy's weapon against us. He took that away and then gave us his Holy Spirit. He put God within us. 
He put himself within us. He made us in his image and he gave us him, his Holy Spirit, so that we knew even though we walk this world, even though we walk in dark places, that God is with us. Even though we live in this world, that God will still lead us and direct us through his Holy Spirit. He gave his Holy Spirit to us, forgave us of our sins and said, no, I'm not done yet. Let me leave my spirit here with you. And he gave his spirit. That's why it's so important for us to build a relationship with God's Holy Spirit, because God is always talking. God is always leading. God is always trying to help us. But we have to humble ourselves. We have to be open to what God is trying to say through his spirit. And we have to allow God to speak to us. We have to be still in his presence. We have to wait on the Lord. I remember when I was growing with God and God would allow me to feel his love. There would be questions that I would ask. I'm like, God, why is this happening? God, why did this happen? And I remember reading his Bible and I remember becoming so angry at God. Like, God, if you loved us, why would you even destroy us? Why would you destroy your people? I didn't understand it. In my mind, I'm like, God, aren't you forgiving? Aren't you loving? Why would you destroy those people? But you have to understand human nature. You have to understand how humans are. Sometimes if God does not break you, you will continue in your own ways. If God does not allow himself to be known, generations will forget who God is. And God's name must live on. God's will must prevail. We have our own lives Though they are only but a moment here on earth, God still has an assignment. God still has a plan and his plan doesn't just involve us. We cannot be so selfish that we think it's only about us. We have to understand that God loves us. God loves us so much that when we are growing with him, he gives us favor. He gives us grace. He has mercy on us. We might fall, we might mess up, but we get back up, yet he still forgives us. I want you to know that God is not in guilt or shame. God is not in those things. So if you feel guilty, if you feel shame, God is not in that. But come to God with what you feel. Come and let God know, God, I, I did this thing. I, I, I'm struggling with this. I just need to know your love. I need to know, God, that you are going to help me. A lot of the times we stumble and we fall because we're trying to do things on our own. We're not being led by God's spirit. God is very strategic. He has a plan for our healing. He has a plan for us growing. God has a plan. It's usually a step-by-step -step plan. I want you to do this in one season. And then the next season, I need you to do this. And he's constantly having us do certain things in different seasons. If we don't get it right one season, the grace of God carries over to the next season. And we're able to live in this grace. We're able to have this grace and walk in it. And God just gives us favor that we're able to get it right. And God starts revealing to us who we are, starts revealing to us more of what our assignment is in the earth. God loves us. God is not just a God who sits in heaven and judges everything and condemns everything and just hates this world. And, and so many people preach that, but God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And all he required us to do is to believe and you shall have eternal life. Believe. That's all he's asking. Just believe. And when you believe, you receive God's spirit. And when you receive God's spirit, then you got God telling you, don't do this. Don't do that. And then all of a sudden, something within you just starts stirring up. Like, you know, I don't think I should be doing that. I don't know why, but I just, I'm not into that lifestyle anymore. That's because God is working in you. God is changing you. God is trying to help your heart. And a lot of times when we run from God, we feel this pulling. That pull is God letting you know, come get filled. I'm still right here. I know you're trying to run, but come get filled. I know it's difficult, but come get filled. Allow me to pour my love into you. Allow me to pour more of my spirit into you. Come get filled. And we have to understand that God is merciful. God understands the struggles of this life. It is not an excuse to continue living in sin, but it is to let you know that God understands and he has a plan. He has a solution and he, he always 
always makes a way out for you that are in difficult situations, relationships you don't want to be in, places you don't want to sit in. God always has a plan. He always has a way out because he loves us. If you read the word of God, a lot of the times God would punish his people. God disciplines. God's love is discipline. The Bible talks about God loves us and he disciplines. That's his love. So there are times where God will discipline. As you do something you're not supposed to do, you are going to be in God's discipline season where God will discipline you to break something off of you so that you do not do it again. And we have to understand that God is for us and not against us. If he does not break that sinful nature, it will become destructive to us. And we want this amazing life, this beautiful life. We want all these things. We want God to bless us. We want God to give to us. Yet we're not willing to just humble ourselves and get in his presence and figure out what his will is. We have to understand that we cannot take God's love for granted. We cannot just be someone who just knows God loves us and then try to do what we want to do anyways. God is still God. God is still Lord. God can give and God can take away. God will always be God. And you have to recognize that God is the creator of all things. He owns all things. So if he wanted you to have something, all you have to do was go ask for it and God would give it to you freely. He gives. But there are seasons where God wants us to grow. There are seasons that God wants us to understand his will, his way. Because if he can root that in us, if he can root his way in us, we would be able to walk with him. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19 says, So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love, and surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. I made this verse into a prayer and I pray it all the time. And I tell God, God, grow my roots down into your love, that I may always know how wide, how high, how deep your love is for me. And I, I pray this prayer and I, I started experiencing God growing me down into his love, making sure I knew his love. When I thought that I was going to fall, God would always make a way. When I thought something was going to be against me, God said, no, I am for you. And God would always show me his unfailing love to the point I don't even have to feel his love anymore. I just know it. And there's a difference between, God, I want to feel your love. I want to get that experience again in your presence. Wrap your arms around me. It becomes something that we, we can't just rely on our feelings. You cannot just rely on your feelings. You have to know that God loves you. And so God will grow you down deep into his love so that you will know that he loves you. And then it says that so that you can be filled to all the measure of the fullness of God. That love can do that to fill us to a measure of the fullness of God. I don't think people understand how powerful love is. The Bible talks about it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God. The greatest above all of these is to just live a life in love. You can have all these gifts, but the greatest is to just love, love. How was that the greatest? All these gifts and miracles and signs and all of these things people can do. But the greatest, the greatest one is love. People don't understand how powerful love is. Love will break strongholds and chains that have been on your mind. Love will allow you to understand and have compassion for people. Love tells you, I battle not with flesh and blood enemies, so I'm not going to be mad at this person. I'm going to be mad at the devil. Love gives you compassion for people. Love is, love, I believe love makes you youthful. <laughs> when you have a childlike love, love makes you so joyful, so youthful. You're not bitter. You're not against people. You are you are growing with God and God is filling you with his love. And when you know that God's love is rooted in you, you start producing the fruit of it. And I started recognizing the fruit 
of the Holy Spirit of love. And there were times where the, the most simplest things, my heart would be softened and I would just be moved to tears at something so simple. I remember one day just looking, looking out at my, my scenery. And I remember just being, my heart just being softened. And it was like my eyes were opened to see things the way God was seeing them at that moment. And I looked and there were mountains and there were trees and there were birds and there were plants. And I just remember God allowing me to open my eyes to see his creation, how God created all of that. And I just started just crying. I'm taking a hike. I'm crying because I'm like, God, your creation is beautiful. And I just started crying because I'm like, wow, if you think about people, the way God sees people, the way God sees his creation, and then for God to look at his creation and to see that his creation, his own creation is not acting as though how he created it to be. They have a sinful nature. They're being influenced by worldly things. They're allowing the enemy to come in spiritually through open doors, that they are not being as though God created them to be. And can you imagine you creating something for women when you have children and you create something and you raise them the best that you can, but they still go in the opposite direction from how you raise them? Just how, just how moved you are by that and how that can break your heart because you try to give them everything that you knew. And for God to make us in his image, he says we're made in his image. We have to know who we are. We are made in God's image. He said, I've given you power and authority. I've given you my Holy Spirit. I've taken your sins away. And I've allowed you to be whole. I've held you in my hands the entire time. Never to let you go. We have to understand that God's love is so powerful that God's love is going to heal. God's love is going to save. God is mighty to save. And he does this all out of love, despite our brokenness, despite our sinful nature. God picks us up and he cleans us off and he makes us new again. God allows us to be born again. God is so understanding to the ways of this world. But when you take his hand, you have to humble yourself. And you have to allow God to fill you with everything that you need because God loves you and God cares for you. God shows mercy. God gives you favor when you don't deserve it. God gives you grace when you should have got things right before. God gives you race. Let's try it again. God gives you time. That's something that I learned that God would give me time. And I would constantly, I wouldn't, it's not that I would stumble and fall. It's just my faith would lack and I would freak out about situations. I would freak out in the fire and God would say, I'm right here with you. Why are you scared? Why are you allowing fear to consume you? Now I got to clean you out again because I love you. And I got to put you back on the solid foundation I built for you. And I want you to try this again. And I want you to believe in me this time. I want you to have faith in me this time. I don't want you to look around you and see things that are going on, but I want you to keep your eyes on me. When you keep your eyes on Jesus, you start to understand God's love for you. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus. Look forward. God gave you the vision. Keep looking forward because if you look around you, it would make you lose faith. It would make you forget that God loves you because he does. God does so much for us daily that we don't even get to see. Our spiritual eyes aren't open to the angels that are fighting for us. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. He will bear, God's angels will bear us up in their hands so that we won't strike our foot against a stone. When you speak the word of God, you can't see angels moving on your behalf, but they are. You woke up that morning, God gave you breath. God loves us so much. And if he allowed us to live another day, then God's plan still continues. God has a plan. He has a plan to get us out. Everything that we're in, God has a plan. And we have to understand that God's plan, God's ways are above our ways. 
We have to understand God had to teach me that sometimes God's plan is supernatural. Sometimes God's plan involves him moving his hand, disrupting this world's flow in order to have his will be done in our lives. And God had to show me that. And I had to believe in that. I had to believe that despite what the world says, despite what statistics say, despite what the people say, that God can move anyways. I'm very passionate about helping people to grow, not just growing with God, but just helping people grow in life. What do you want to do? What do you want to become? Have you spoke to God about it? Have you got your plan? Because he loves you. He knows the desires on your heart. He loves you. A lot of the times things don't go our way because God has his own way that's going to lead to our vision. And a lot of the times God's way is a lot easier. <laughs> and that's why the enemy fights us so much from getting in God's flow. Because when we get in God's flow, the walk becomes a breeze. Although we're working hard for the Lord, although things will come against us and we might struggle, we might fall, we get back up. But it's a lot easier to be in God's flow than it is to be in our own flow, the world's flow. I remember just feeling God's love one day, just the presence and this guy just wrapping his love around me. And I remember crying out and saying, God, people need to feel this. They need to know this. Do you know that if you allow people to feel this, God, that you will change their lives? All they need is to know your love. That's it. It will change everything. <laughs> And I remember just telling God this, letting him know, let them feel your love. Just let them feel it. Let them be in your presence just for a moment. Let them feel how comforting it is. Because you, it's like you search this whole world for where you belong. But once you step into God's presence and feel his love, you're like, wow, this is where I should have been the whole time. What was I doing out in this world? <laughs> and I remember just telling God, God, people need your love. You cannot not give your love to people. They need it. And then God started putting on my heart that I need to make TikTok videos, that I need to make YouTube videos, that I need to be the vessel, that I need to speak out and let people know that God loves, that God is still a good God. And I didn't understand it before. I'm like, there has to be another way. There has to be a different way besides me getting up on a platform and speaking. There has to be another way, God. And I ran from this. I'd make a video here and there, but I was running like, okay, Lord, what's next? I did it. And he's like, no, continue in it. Continue doing it. And then one day I said, God, I can't continue doing this because I don't love it yet. And then all of a sudden I started getting all these emails and then all these messages of people telling me how I helped them and people telling me their testimony and people just wanting to talk because they had nobody to talk to. And I remember God doing that. And I remember just praising God and just praying for people like I pray for myself. And I said, thank you, Lord. I didn't know your ways. I didn't know what you were doing, but you were leading me on the right path. And I fell in love with just being a vessel for God, just being a living sacrifice. I have so many things that I want to do on my own. <laughs> I was getting my master's degree. God said, stop doing that. It's distracting you. And of course, I'm going to continue doing that. Like, Lord, I got to finish my degree. But for the meantime, God had me stop doing that. Because there, there's, it was a distraction for what God was trying to show me, what God was trying to reveal to me. Because we get to a point where we think we know who we are and we, God gives us this vision and we see things, but there comes a time where God's like, I want you to stop doing everything that you want to do. And I want you to do what I want to do because I got more of you to reveal. I need to reveal more of you. I need to show you what we can do together. And so I had to let go of what I thought I knew in order for God to show me who I truly was, who I was and who I am, who God was. Nothing I do is because of me. If you heard my testimony before, I didn't like talking. God moved in and showed me that I talk a lot. <laughs> and God just completely changed my life and started changing who I was, changing my mind, renewing my mind, all for his love for me. 
God loved me. I was out in the world wilding. <laughs> Not really, I mean, <laughs> but I was, I was just stuck in my own ways. I was stuck doing me. I was stuck doing me in my own flow. Things always had to go my way. I always had to have my hand on something. It had to be my way or the highway. <laughs> and God said, let go of all of that. Let go of all you think you know and take my hand and let me lead you. And I, and I say to this day, God is truly the love of my life. No one can compare. No one's love could ever be as unconditional as God's love. No man, no woman, no family, no nobody, not even my own son's love can compare to God's love. When I started understanding God's love, I started seeing myself a little bit differently as well. I started understanding that God loves me. God trusts me to be able to do his will. And you start loving yourself differently as well. When God's love gets within you, you love yourself to where you, you don't go, you're not going to put up with relationships that bring you down. You're not going to put up with a lifestyle that destroys your body. You're going to start loving yourself and you're going to love others as yourself. And so I make these videos. I wanted to do growing with God because I love everyone. I love people and even the people who have hurt me, even the people who have talked about me, even the people who have done me wrong. I love all of them. I pray for all of them because I want God's will to be done. I understand that God needs something to be done in the earth and it takes people. It takes people for God to move through. God can't come physically down here to earth anymore like Jesus, but he dwells within us through his spirit. And so when you understand that even though someone hurts you, when you understand and you start having compassion for that person, understand that God loves them too, you start wanting them to live a life that's pleasing to God. And you're not about to just run them down and say, return to the Lord, all this stuff. No, you're going to have compassion. You're going to pray for that person here or there when God tells you to pray for them. And you're going to be someone who serves people. And that's so important to understand that you serve people. A lot of people think that God's going to put them on this platform and people are going to serve them. No, you are called to serve people. Even Jesus was like, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was thirsty, did you give me something to drink? Did you invite me into your home? And they're like, Lord, when when did you when did you do when did you do that? When did you ask for some food? When did you ask for something to drink? And Jesus was like, when my people did. When you do what you do to the least of these, you do to me. When people, people, you are to serve people. A lot of people think that we're just serving the Lord and doing the Lord's will. Don't you know the Lord's will is to bring people to Him? to help people. When you are helping someone, you are serving someone. Even if you don't have to, I think a lot of people in today's society, we think that serving and helping someone always has to include money. It ain't got to include money, finances, none of that. God can give you a word for someone's life, advice, and you go and you feed them that word and you change their life. You change their perspective. You introduce them to something new. And so we have to understand that we are called to serve. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4, 10, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Don't take advantage of the gifts God gives you. <laughs> we are called to serve. We are called to love. God has mercy on us. God has showed us his mercy. God has showed us his unfailing love. These are all fruits of the spirit. The things that God gives to us, the fruits of the spirit, God didn't just place it within us so that we can go out and just be a walking fruit of the spirit. No, it's to help people. It's to serve people, bring people back to God. Galatians 5 says, through love, serve one another. Sometimes all you gotta do is be love. Sometimes all people need is love. And I'm not talking about your love's gotta be affectionate and just so touchy touchy. Sometimes your love can just be, let me hear what you have to say. Let me help you. Let me check on you. You know, just showing kindness, showing love, showing kindness. Especially when 
there's so much going on in the world. We get so self-centered sometimes and we try to keep our relationship with God just between us and God. And, you know, it's it's easy to grow with God. But one, one thing God started telling me to do is like, Kenny, I, I'm about to push you out now. And I'm like, no, Lord, I want to hold on to you. <laughs> like, I don't want to go back into the world. And I was like, no, I need to push you out now. I need you put, I need to put you on a stand because you are the light. I have to put you on a stand now. I have to push you out so that you can be the light. And for the longest time I fought that, like, Lord, I ain't trying to be all public. My life is private. I want to be private. God said, I'm pushing you out, Kenya. <laughs> I need to push you out. And there's a lot of people that God wants to push out, but we have to grow with him. We have to understand him. We have to understand his will for our life. And God will start pushing you out so that you can be love, so that you can be the light. Thank you so much for watching. I just want to take some time and I just want to pray for people. I just want to pray for those who just don't feel loved, who just want to understand and know what God's love feels like. Because I'm telling you, when you feel God's love, you won't want to leave. You might be lukewarm, going back and forth from the world to God. But let me tell you, when, when God truly starts revealing his love for you and starts showing it to him, revealing it to you, you, you just want to attach yourself to that. <laughs> and you want all of God's love. And so I just want to pray for those who just might want God's love. Father, I just thank you for all those who are watching. Father, we come before you and I ask that you would soften those hearts, God. Soften the hearts of those, Father, who need to be softened. And I ask, God, that you would just begin to pour out your love, a fresh outpouring of your love into us, Lord. Let us be able to know your love, God. Grow our roots down into your love so that we can know it, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that you are just going to make yourself known, Father that your presence would begin to surround them, Lord, and let them know that they are loved. Where there is a broken heart, God, put your love there. Where there is frustration or anger, put your love there, God. Where people just don't know what to do and they're afraid and they're scared and their fear is just trying to consume them, Lord, put your love there. Put your love in the hearts of your people. Let us know your love so that we may not stray away from you, God, but we will be pulled closer towards you. I pray that your love just begins to release into our hearts right now, Lord, and that your love begins to consume us, that we may know, God, where we stand in your kingdom. For we are seated in high places with Christ. That is where we belong, God. For you don't look at us as sinners. You don't look at us as you hate us, God. But you look at us in love. In love for your creation. In love for the men and women that you have created, Lord. And I just thank you, Father, for those who might be crying. For those who might be secretly crying at night. Who might be going through the struggle. Who might be going through the fire and they don't see a way out. Fix their eyes on you right now, Father that they may be fixed on you, Lord, and not be reminded of what, go what goes on around them, God. But because they fix their eyes on you, Father, they will know your love. They will know that this life is in your hands and you are mighty to save. And I just thank you, God, that you are saving your people. Those who might feel like they're falling or drowning, God, that you just use the almighty arm and you hold them up, Lord. And you let them know that they are loved that they have always been in your hands, that you have never left them or forsaken them, and that you are with them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you so much for watching. I think that this is very important to understand God's love. Because if we don't understand God's love for us, we will try to find it in this world. And it may be the wrong love. It may not be the right love that God wants us to find within people. I always tell God, Lord, if you're gonna give me a husband, you gotta be in him because you're the one who knows how I need to be loved. <laughs> but we have to understand God's love. We can't go in this world looking for love. We have to know that we are loved. And I just pray every day, I pray that my videos are getting pushed out to the right people, 
that someone somewhere, even if it's just one person, is touched, is growing with God, and is becoming closer in relationship with God's Holy Spirit. Because I love everyone. I love all of you. I love you all. And I thank you for supporting me. I thank you for watching this. If you made it to the end, I just thank you. All glory to God. Glory to God for who he has created me to be. Glory to God for who I am. Because everything I am is because of him. And so thank you and God bless. And if you want to continue growing with God, definitely check out some of the free ebooks that I have. And just stay tuned for more videos to come because I'm not done yet. <laughs> so thank you for watching. God bless.